What is up and welcome to Loose Beats Tutorials where we chill out and learn something. I'm Toby aka Cushing from the TND YouTube channel. Make sure you check out everything we do on our page and today we're going to learn how to properly set up and play drum pads in Logic. So if you use a different DAW then it's going to be the same principles but might look a little different. Let's go ahead and jump over to our pads. All right, so today I'm using my Akai MPK 249, which is a production center, keyboard, dock control, all in one. And I will have a video describing more about how to use this with Logic because it is especially hard, especially if you use Big Sur. But today I'm just focusing on the pads here. And as you see, we've got uh, nice little triggers, very sensitive, if you can see the color change very very sensitive pads which can come in handy and so uh, today I'm gonna go ahead and pull up a uh, drum machine that we can use all right so and actually uh, you can pull it up like this so this empty kit um, and pick out your kicks and your hi-hats and everything and just place them along the lines here but you can also go and pick actual kits, entire kits, that are going to be loaded for you. If you, an easy way to do that would be opening a software instrument, going back from the electric piano that pops up and hitting your electronic drum, drum kit. Just the easy way to automatically load it in your drum machine here. So now we got everything from the kit we need and you can see it triggering here. Now, one thing right off the bat is the way that Logic organizes their kits. If you don't make your own, uh, typically they are gonna be moved around. Now, some other uh, production centers and things might uh, register with this, but again, using Big Sur with Akai, they have not caught up with that technology yet. So with uh, something like this, you'd actually have to go in, you'd have to hit your pad, hit edit, and so you're going to see um, your MIDI, and then you're going to see your number. Here, that's a fader. So this, there's your pad, number one. And you see your note down here, C2. If you look on the drum machine, your first one is set to C1. So automatically... Um, it's registering a different note too. So it's registering it, it uh, at C number two instead of one. So when you're going through, if you were gonna match them up perfectly, so if you wanted the second one to hit that snare instead of that click, you would go in and see it's set to C sharp number two, and we would go, yeah. We hop down, oh, where's my pad? hop down to our C sharp and move it to D2. And see now we've got these two lined up right in order. And so you can go through and actually adjust your notes if you'd like to, but there's other ways of playing. I mean, you could just leave it alone and feel out where, you know, like your hi-hat. Normally you'd want down here, so it'd be a little easier, but to save some time, you can just go and feel out uh, where the where they automatically lie, but yeah again if you want to go in you can actually change the notes and Set them up to where they match up perfectly not always necessary though, and so So we have this everything lined up and um, Basically what we want to do if we do are gonna leave these we're gonna find our own little patterns inside of it, you know we're gonna find where they are just to save us a little bit of time. And so about the actual playing of the pads is something, I haven't played pads for my entire life. You know, I've been on instruments and things and making beats mainly through sequencers. And so using these pads is a little different for me. And so just kind of getting the hang of them, I, I find myself uh, going to the two-handed method mostly and kind of just using one to two fingers on each hand here. See, like, it, it gives you a lot more control because some people, you could do that same thing with this one-handed approach. But as you can see, it's a little bit harder to control. 
And another thing I like about these really sensitive pads are if you listen, you can hear that uh, that chop that it's doing in there is an, an actual natural thing. It's not uh, any electronic thing picking up my finger movements. It's actually the pad gripping on my hand and it bouncing. So there's kind of a analog way to get this, you know. Like if you just wanted to throw it in, you know. But you know, it's a little it's a little different, you know, just learning kind of how to approach these. I see a lot of people playing different ways and you know, I see some people doing pad method and setting up like bongos in a section, you know, they'll pick a four and they'll actually just hit on them. Not my favorite style. I see some people using uh, drum sticks and things like that, which there are drum pads that are meant for that, but they're normally a lot bigger and a lot sturdier. These are sensitive and obviously meant for a finger. And so again, my method, besides the double hand just with two fingers and just kind of getting the feel of it there, I, uh, you know, depending on what you're looking for, if you're looking for a more islandy beat or something, sometimes you can find your toms and you'll want them played with your hi-hats or with a cymbal or something. And that method, you can kind of kind of play with a three-finger approach, you know. But it's just really, it depends on what you're, what you're going for, you know, what style you're going for and the easiest way around it. So I would say to just start out, you know, feel out kind of your method of how you want to go about it and what feels natural depending on where you want everything set up and so yeah, I just wanted to show a basic approach to setting up your drum pads and your placement, you know, like again, I think your your kick is always probably starting in your left corner here. Your hats for me, I like them within these four, something that I can use my other hand for. And I do like having my snare uh, right above my kick over here and then kind of various from there. Like my outsides, I prefer to have like cymbals and things like that and these mid ones in this area you know is kind of a place for toms and uh different kind of effects and sounds for me because it's an area that i don't get to you know so there's you know there's a crawling methods too that i've seen people do where they work up like that you know but again it depends on how you set your kit it's all about how you set it up it really isn't about how you play it as much as your placement so when you go in here and you figure out where everything needs to be, you kind of can just play it with one hand if you get it set up properly. But again, it just seems to be easier to keep uh, keep beat and together if you use your two-handed method and uh, just kind of keep all your solid uh, samples that you're going to use the most here at the bottom, close access, you know. And again, there's different, but there's different ways. You know, there's different ways to set up your approaches because it, it depends on how you like to play too, you know. Some people would want to play more piano, more piano-like and use all of their fingers. Some people will stick to a one and one And so, you know, you just got to fill it out and see what it feels like to you. But I just wanted to give a basic run through, you know. This is something I'm dealing with right now is figuring out how uh, to streamline my pads. It's just because it takes me a minute to get them set up and it... It doesn't feel right and the things aren't in the right place. So by taking these few steps, getting your, your presets right on your pads, your notes right to match up in Logic, which it shouldn't be that hard, but, you know, Akai still hasn't caught up here. So um, besides doing that and figuring out the most uh, ergonomic way of you going about it, the easiest way for you to get into it, uh, it's just picking your good samples now, you know. So now you can go through and actually pick out uh, kicks and snares from different kits and mix and match them and you know you can it's in basically endless what you can do with it but this is a fun little fun little thing you know i, I love getting into this and and just figuring out now those subtle little cuts and stuff are are pretty difficult to get perfect so again it could be a thing that you could use you could use them a little bit like that just tastefully and then go in and use your quantize to kind of make them right um but at some point it might just be easier to play your basic setup here and then go in and cut in your editing so it's all preference you know
that's basically what we've learned today is you got to figure it out yourself. Maybe maybe that's the best route is that you go and actually play, figure out what you like. You know, it takes years to get comfortable and get everything right set up. So good luck on your mission and we will see you in the next Loose Beats.